babe, why are you on the floor right there? Hey everyone, I'm Ashley of Ann Cosplay, and today I'm gonna be showing you how I made my entire Jules cosplay from Fortnite. This includes everything from the gloves to ohm and even an entire utility belt with functioning pouches. Yes, it has pockets. So let's get into it. To get started, I decided to work on the goggles. I was gifted these amazing goggles by a super generous TikTok follower. The only thing they needed was to be painted red. Since they were made of a plastic material, I sanded them first, that way the paint would have something to grab onto and wouldn't crack and peel off. Then I went ahead and added a basic acrylic paint to them. Acrylic paint dries pretty matte, and I wanted them to be nice and shiny like the rest of the goggles, so I did a clear glossy varnish on top of them. I think I did about two coats of it until I was happy with how shiny it was. Up next were the gloves. These were also gifted to me by the same TikTok follower, and I cannot say how much I appreciate it. They were a little big on me since they're proper welding gloves, so I had to do some work on these. They were so thick that I couldn't turn them inside out to sew them, so I actually stitched just right on the outside and cut the pieces off. I took them in at the wrist, and then I also had to shorten the fingers because they were incredibly long. I simply marked off where my finger actually came to in the glove. And then I stitched right on that line I made. And then I just cut that thing right off of there. It took a while and it involved my sewing machine getting jammed about 12 times, but I finally took them all in and I used some of my leftover material that I cut off to add some cute little details to the wrist and just make the gloves a little bit more interesting. Once I was happy with the fit of the gloves and the way they were looking, it was time to weather them. This is always like such a fun part for me. I just mixed up some black and brown paint to get kind of a dirty, oily color, mixed some water into it, and just started applying it everywhere to the glove. I had to keep in mind that the water was going to make the leather naturally look darker than it was going to dry to, so I just kind of took a risk and started layering it on. I used different levels of water and paint to kind of get a varied look, and in the end, it ended up looking really cool. I just tried to consider where I thought the dirt would sort of gather on the gloves, making sure to add more paint to some areas where dirt would naturally collect. It was about a 100 degree day outside, so I just threw them on my balcony to dry. And in the end, they looked really cool. And here I am adding masking tape so that I could draw on some of these armor detail shapes on our gloves. This is the part that really takes it to the next level. These shapes that I drew then became my templates for the armor. I took my time adding different details to them. One of my favorite methods is using a blade to cut into the foam, but not all the way through it, and then going over it with a heat gun, which opens up those cuts that you made. And I also did a lot of my favorite thing, sanding. It's always such a mess. Before painting and attaching the various pieces, I used my heat gun to heat them up and form them to the shape of my hand. Once that was all set, I got to painting with my acrylics. Finally, to attach all the pieces, I simply used hot glue. And here was the finished product. Definitely a far cry from the original look that the gloves had. I was super satisfied with them. They're one of my favorite parts of the cosplay. So for the shirt, I had actually already made a shirt before the season began. The only thing I really need to do was take up the collar a bit. I did this by turning the shirt inside out and then pulling up the straps and pinning them into place. I then brought it to my sewing machine and stitched where I left those pins. And then I just cut the extra material right off. To make it a little neater, I top stitched the loose ends down, and then I was looking pretty good! 
I also needed to darken up the logo on this shirt, and I used a mix of acrylic paints and just went right over it. And there was the final product, all tied up in the back. Then it was on to the belts. I went to a fabric store and picked up duck canvas in a brown color and a kind of yellowy color that I thought worked really well. She does have a lot of strappy belts and pouches, which could be kind of overwhelming, but just take it one piece at a time and it's not so bad. I did a lot of measuring and cutting and sewing different pieces, but I just took it one bit at a time and worked off this main belt piece I made and it worked really well. I used lots of sewable Velcro to keep everything together. Like I said, I worked one piece at a time. Yo, you wanna see some real speed? So yeah, Gabe was there to oversee every step of the way, as always. To make the pouches, I measured the depth and width and height and cut out the various pieces for them. This actually isn't too difficult to do, there's just a lot of little pieces, but I stitched them all together and eventually turned the pouch right side out. They were a little floppy, so I ended up cutting out cardboard to make them look nice and boxy. And here were my perfectly functioning pouches. I also made a top flat piece and used hot glue to attach that as well as some details and a little bit of velcro. I pinned everything together for placement and tried it on lots of times to make sure I was happy with where I was at before I permanently attached anything. This was looking pretty good, so I continued on to the other leg. And here I am measuring some more. And making some more strappy belts. It's looking pretty cool! Hanging from the right leg is a little wrench. I decided to trace out a pattern, cut it out, and then translate it to 10 millimeter foam. I gave it some sanding to make it look nice and pretty, and then I ended up painting it with acrylic paint when it was done. Then I assembled everything and did a nice little fit test before I went ahead and stitched everything together. It looked really cool. I was so happy with this. One thing I really wanted to complete this cosplay was her robotic owl named Ohm. I started by using this Punish Props template for a Game of Thrones egg as the base for his body. I traced all the pieces out onto 5mm foam and cut them out. This worked as the perfect shape for his body and it's what I built off of to complete this entire prop. I used contact cement to attach everything and I also used a heck of a lot of contact cement on the rest of this prop. At this point, he was looking like a cute little egg boy. I also used the same template scaled down for his head, but this is a piece I later adjusted. I honestly had no idea how this prop was going to work out, so I wish I have a better way of explaining this. Really, I did a lot of tracing and creating patterns and cutting them out of various weights of foam to make it nice and interesting and seem really layered. You can kind of see how I'm layering pieces on the tail here. I wanted him to be able to stand on his own, and I did this by feeding wire through some foam dowels, which you can see here, that I drilled into the body and glued together. It actually worked out in the end, and I left some leftover wire, which I could use to wrap around my hand or my arm. Then it was time to make the body look less like an egg. I used masking tape to put it over the body, that way I could draw on the shapes that I wanted and be able to cut them out and use them as my template. These were all the shapes I ended up cutting out of 2mm foam. It ended up having a really nice effect. Yes, I did use a bottle of hot sauce to help hold the shape in place. <laughs> but anyway, I used contact cement and my heat gun to kind of help me attach these pieces and make them form to the body. Then I started on the wings. I used the same method I did on the tail where I ended up layering different shapes and different weights of foam to give it a nice layered look. I used that method again of cutting into the foam and hitting it with a heat gun to open up the cuts just to make it more interesting and add more detail. Finally, I had to make the head. What I ended up doing was cutting my smaller egg shape in half and then half again and using that for the back of the head. 
Then I basically just built off of that piece. I layered up a lot of pieces of foam, sanded them down a lot, and just kind of kept adding pieces, adding details, making things, reassessing until I was happy with it. And to my surprise, it kind of came together pretty well. I popped a couple little ears on him and he was done. And about 10 hours later, this is what he looked like and it was time to paint. I primed it with Plasti Dip and then used one of my favorite silver spray paints for it. I also weathered it afterwards and added some details to the eyes, which you'll see later on. With the outfit and props ready, it was time to get into cosplay. I used Snazaru body paint in four different colors. I put my outfit on and traced the outline so I knew where I had to do my body paint, but I changed so I wouldn't ruin my top. I wasn't feeling super confident, so I sketched the designs out in each section first with an eyebrow pencil. It was a really rough sketch, but it really gave me a starting point. Just look at a lot of references from different angles. I tried to work from lightest color to darkest color, but I kind of messed up along the way, but it, it still worked out in the end, okay? You know, whatever gets you there. It took me about three hours total, but I think the next time it'll go faster. And here was the full look. It turned out so cool. I loved it. Thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. As usual, be sure to tag me on all social media. I'm Ann Cosplay on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. See you next time.